Are you tired of drawing dots? Would you like to replace bonded pairs of electrons with dashes? Correct. That's right, we're still talking about Lewis dot diagrams. Lewis. Hit the theme. Ain't nothing but a chem thing, baby. Too flipped out, teachers going crazy. Lancaster is a district that pays me. Unbreakable, so please don't try to break this. But uh, back to the lecture at hand. Hello and welcome to another episode of Shu Fu coming at ya. I'm your host Fu and with me as always is Shu. Shu know it. So Shu, in the last video we talked about Lewis dot diagrams. And in today's video we're going to talk about Lewis dot diagrams. So let's get started. Bonded Lewis dot diagrams 2. Special cases. A lesson from the bonding unit. Intro. Sometimes it is useful to count up the total electrons instead of trying to keep track of where each electron comes from. Also, we can represent a bond, which is one pair of electrons, as a line instead of a pair of dots. So in our diagram, we've selected a molecule that has single, double, and triple bonds. If you take a look at anywhere there is a single dash, that is a single bond. In the middle, you can see three dashed lines, that's our triple bond. And over to the right, you can see our double bond represented by two dashes. Now, the lone pair of electrons, the dots that are not bonded, are still going to be shown. Okay, let's do an example. Fu, are you ready? I am. All right, we're gonna do CH4. Instead of doing individual Lewis dot diagrams, we're gonna go right to an electron total. So, looking at valence electrons, let's start with carbon. How many valence electrons does carbon have? Carbon has four valence electrons. How about hydrogen? Hydrogen has one, um, but I notice I have four of them, so I'm gonna multiply that one times four. Good, let's add them all up. Uh, four plus four, that's eight. Good, so now we know we're working with eight electrons total. Now, when we look at the form of CH4, that first element kind of implies that the carbon is the central atom. So let's draw carbon in the center. Okay. We're gonna surround it with four hydrogens. And again, we're kind of avoiding using dots. We're not worried about where the dots came from originally. We just wanna use up eight electrons Remember, a line represents a pair of electrons, two electrons. So just connect them to the carbon, huh? Exactly. Now, we can still do our check if we want. Do you see how if we add up by twos, because the line represents two, we get eight around carbon, two, four, six, eight. And each hydrogen has two because it only needs two to fill its outer shell. Good. Polyatomic ions. If you recall, poly means many, atomic means atoms, so these are many atoms that make up our ions. They're covalently bonded and have a net charge. Use brackets around the covalent structure with the charge outside. Positive ions remove electrons from your total. For negative ions, you'll add electrons to your total. If we take a look at the picture, we have OH-, which is hydroxide ion you can see that it has a negative charge. This means that we've gained an electron, so we should add an electron to our total. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna do an example here of a polyatomic ion. You ready, Shu? I'm ready. All right, we've got PO4, three minus. That's the phosphate polyatomic ion. So our first element is phosphorus. How many valence electrons does phosphorus have? Um, it's got five. Good, and how many does oxygen have? Oxygen has six. And there's four of them. All right, there's four of them, so I'm gonna multiply by four. All right, good. And we have one other thing to deal with, that three minus charge. What does that mean? All right, I gotta think this through. So if it's negative three, we must have gained three negatively charged electrons. Good, and since we gained them, we're gonna add them to the total here. All right, so a little confusing that it says three minus, but I'm actually adding three, but that's what I gotta do. And when I get my total, I get 32 electrons. That's a lot of electrons. That is a lot of electrons. But don't worry, this is a little easier than it might look like right now. We're gonna look at our central atom of phosphorus since it's the first one given to us. Okay. And you know what? These are covalently bonded. At a minimum, they have to have a single covalent bond. It could be double or triple, but it has to be a minimum of single. So we're just gonna go ahead and put single bonds to all those oxygens, and there's four of them. Okay, so. We're not sure what we're doing with all the 32, but I can at least start by bonding everything with a single bond. That makes sense, okay. Good, now to get to our 32, we have to make sure everything gets an octet. Now, 
The nice thing about these unbonded pairs of electrons, those dots, if you will, is we can just put them in to give each one of the elements their octet. Okay, so if I remember that the line represents two, that's Good. my first two, I'll start at this top oxygen. So I, need, I already have two, four, six, eight. So the oxygen should have eight around it right Good. now. Good, so let's do that for all the oxygens. All right, because it's gonna be the same thing consistently. All right, how's it looking? It's looking pretty good. Let's confirm that we have all 32 electrons, because if we have all 32 and everything has an octet, we have a good diagram. All right, I'm gonna count them all just to be sure. So two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, four, 26, 28, 30, 32. All right, so since we can say yes to these two questions, does everything have an octet? And do we have the grand total that we started with of 32 electrons? Since we can say yes to both of those, we have a good diagram. All right, there's one last thing to do to remember because this is a polyatomic ion, all Lewis diagrams that are ions have to have this. And do not forget it. Uh, those brackets, right? Yeah, brackets are on the entire structure. And we need the charge that is shown in the question. So we can write it as three minus or minus three. Good, nice clean diagram. You try number one. Draw the Lewis dot diagram for the polyatomic ion ammonium, NH4 plus. Resonance. Equivalent structures, but with the location of the double or triple bond changing. The actual structure is really an average of the two or three structures. The electrons do not really alternate locations as the electron is a wave with no distinct location. So if you take a look at the diagram to the right, we have a very famous molecule called benzene. Now benzene has a hexagonal structure in the middle. Now every point on that hexagon is a carbon atom. You can kind of see the double bonds between every other set of carbon atoms. Well, if you take a look at the version of benzene to the right, it looks like those double bonds have shifted. It's actually just showing the other possibility for where those double bonds could be, because it could be either. In reality, it's both. And if you take a look at the bottom structure of benzene, that one's kind of showing the average of both those two resonance structures by showing the circle in the middle, which represents those double bonds alternating between the carbon atoms. Let's do an example showing resonance. Fu, you ready? I am. All right, we're gonna do ozone O3. We're gonna start with our electron total. All right, well, oxygen has six, and there are three of them. That's a grand total of 18 electrons. All right, we're ready to go. It's three of the same atom. We're just gonna put them right in a row. Yeah, just bond it, right? So oxygen to oxygen to oxygen. Always good to start with those single bonds. All right, so let's fill in other electrons, giving every oxygen eight. Okay, so the left one has two, so there's four, six, eight. Middle one has two bonds, so it just needs four more electrons for eight, because each bond is a pair. Good. Um, and then the last one just needs six more to get to eight also. So everything's got an octet. All right, good, and that's always one criteria we have for a correct Lewis dot structure. Okay. There's a little bit of a problem, though. We did write 18 up top, okay. and I want you to check your electron total right now. All right, so if I check my electron total, I've got two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. So although you got everybody eight, you actually used too many electrons. Okay. We need to use fewer, and if we have to use fewer electrons, this might mean we have to share more in the middle. We might have to have multiple, as in double or triple bonds. So make one of these single bonds a double bond? Yes, but we're gonna have to remove some electrons to do that. Okay, so I'm gonna make this a double bond. Okay. And that puts 10 electrons then on each of those two O's there, so I- Too many. Like sprinkles, I can just get rid of them, right? Sure. Like that? All right, so let's make sure that everyone still has eight. All right, so this oxygen has eight there. Good. This oxygen has eight there this oxygen has eight there. So Good. I see eight on each one. Good, again, first bit of criteria. Second being, let's make sure we use the correct number of electrons. Let's confirm that we have 18 electrons. Right, I'm gonna now. erase those circles so I can count these. So I've got two, four, six, eight, 10, 
12, 14, 16, 18. All right, good. So now we have the second bit of criteria fulfilled that we've used the correct electron total. Now, this is an example to illustrate resonance, so there's something else we need to do. We're gonna draw a double arrow next to our ozone structure, and that's gonna represent that there is resonance possible. So where else could that double bond appear? Oh, okay, so the double bond could be on that one, right? Good. Okay. So let's reshuffle our electrons a little bit to show the double bond in a different location. All right. So I'm going to start with those same three oxygens, but I'm going to put the double bond over there. Good. And then I can just sprinkle dots in to get eight, right? Yep. So that one just needs four. This middle, oh, this middle one needs two, right? Yep. And then I need six. Looks and good. That should be it, right? Exactly. Now, again, just to reiterate, in resonance structures, we're showing that although it looks like the location of that double bond changes, really we'd have an averaging of these two structures together. Okay. You try number two. You're going to draw resonance structures for the nitrate ion NL3 minus. Note that it's a polyatomic ion with a charge, and you should get three resonance structures. Less than an octet. Sometimes atoms can be stable without fulfilling the octet rule. Hydrogen, as we know, is stable with only two valence electrons. Boron is stable with only six valence electrons. If you look at our picture below, there's another example. Beryllium is stable with four valence electrons. All right, we're gonna do an example here of an element that uses less than eight valence electrons to become stable. Shu, are you ready? I'm ready. All right, BH3, we just learned about boron. Okay, so let's get our total right. Good. All right, so we've got boron having three. Hydrogen has one, but there's three of them. So I only have six electrons. Okay, so our central atom here is that first one, boron. Okay. And we're just gonna bond it. All right, so hydrogen's all around. Bond it. It's bonded. Okay, so let's check our octets, but wait a minute, do either one of these get an octet? I guess they don't. Um, hydrogen only needs two. Good. It's got two. Um, and then boron in the middle, it's got two, four, six right there. So six is what makes boron stable, so it doesn't need any dots, it's already set. So are we showing six total? We are showing six total. And is every element stable? It looks like it is. And we have a good Lewis diagram. Awesome. More than an octet, sometimes called an expanded octet. Any element in period three or beyond has empty d orbitals that can participate in bonding. You will know that you have an expanded octet because you will have too many electrons in your total. Extra bonds or electrons will always go on the central atom. If you take a look at our example here, we've got xenon in the middle of those four fluorine atoms, and xenon actually has 12 electrons around it. Okay, let's do an example of an expanded octet. You ready, Flo? I am. All right, we're gonna do PCL5. Let's get our electron total. All right, so phosphorus has five valence electrons. Chlorine has seven, but there are five of them for a grand total of 40 electrons. Quite a lot of electrons. That's a lot, yep. All right, well, we know our central atom is P. Let's put that in the middle. Okay. And we actually have to surround it, just based on the formula, with five chlorine atoms. Okay, so just since it says five chlorines, I need five of them around it, right? We do. Okay, so one, two, three. Uh, I'm just gonna kind of split this side Sounds here. Sounds good. Yep, we, we've gotta throw in those bonds right away. Now, let, let's look at phosphorus. Okay, we have to have at least those single bonds, right? So, how many electrons are around phosphorus? All right, well, I see five bonds and each one is two, so that's 10 electrons already. So that's how we know we have an expanded octet. Phosphorus has more than eight, it actually has 10 around it. Okay. We can continue, however, by fulfilling the octet rule for the surrounding atom. So let's give all of the chlorines now eight. All right, so each one already has a single bond, so each chlorine needs six more, so I'm just gonna... Throw Looking six good. dots around each one. All right, so we know phosphorus has 10, that's okay. Can we confirm, though, that every chlorine has fulfilled the octet rule? Uh, yeah, if we circle each group, it looks like we have eight around each chlorine. All right, now let's check our electron total. Always wanna do that as well. Okay, so I've got two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 
22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36, 38, oop, and 40 right there. All right, good. So we've not only fulfilled the octet rule for the chlorine atoms, we've also used 40 electrons with an expanded octet on phosphorus. You try number three. Dry Lewis dot diagram for SF6. Well, that's going to do it for today's episode on special cases of Lewis diagrams. It's been emotional. Today's episode is brought to you by... Mini Maids Cleaning Service. Mini Maids get into nooks and crannies that traditional cleaning services can't reach, and our employees aren't afraid to get dirty. In fact, they prefer it. One free 30-minute mini session with a mention of this ad. Minimum wage not required for children. Regular sessions have a four-hour minimum, 45-minute nap included. But we never off, but we zone to the brick of dawn. S-C-I-E-N-C-E -E -E, in the hall, they call S-Wing. You know we never wear a tie. Like my homies, boys, two men, it's so hard to say goodbye. Like, like this, that, and this, and uh. It's like that, and like this, and like that, and uh. It's like this. You're going in low-power mode. Plug and chill to the next episode.